Spitz and German Spitz are very similar breeds that share a past, but what are the differences between a Pomeranian and a German Spitz? In this video, I share the similarities and the differences between Pomeranians and German Spitz. So what are Spitz? Spitz dogs were bred in the cold Arctic regions originating from Scandinavia, Asia, Russia, and North America. The exact story of the Spitz origin is a mystery, with the 2,000-year-old remains of Spitz dogs being found in Switzerland. The name Spitz derives from the German word Spitzen. Most Spitz breeds have pointy ears, a heavy double coat, and curly tails that rest on their backs. Spitz breeds are very wolf-like and have been found to have the closest DNA ties to wild wolves. Spitz dogs have a history of being hard-working dogs, pulling sleds, herding livestock, and guarding their territory. A Spitz is often a very loyal, affectionate, and intelligent dog. Between 50 and 70 different dog breeds can be classified as Spitz dogs. Currently, the AKC recognizes 16 different Spitz breeds. So where do Pomeranians originate from? Pomeranians originate from the region once known as Pomerania in Northeastern Europe. This historical region can be found on the south shore of the Baltic Sea split between Poland and Germany. So where do German Spitz originate from? The German Spitz also originates from Pomerania. Although the German Spitz and Pomeranians both originate from the same region with similar histories and both having ties to English nobles, their stories are very different. So what is the history of a German Spitz? The first documented German Spitz dates back to 1450. German Spitz were used as guard dogs on German farms alerting their owners when strangers appeared. The breed at this time was known as a peasant's dog until the 1800s. King George I of England and his wife as well as many family members owned German Spitz and often brought them to court. After World War I, there was a drastic decline in the breed's popularity. After the war, anything that had the German name tied to it held a negative attachment. Many breeds that had the German name were often changed to something else like the American Eskimo dog. The popularity of the German Spitz has continued to grow, though at a slow pace. So what is the history of Pomeranians? Pomeranians started off as working dogs just like the German Spitz pulling sleds, herding livestock, and being guard dogs. In actuality, during this time period, Pomeranians were not referred to as Pomeranians. Most likely, a Pomeranian and German Spitz were the exact same dog breed. It wasn't until the late 1800s when Queen Victoria developed a love of Pomeranians that Pomeranians and German Spitz took different paths. Queen Victoria at the time had at least 35 Pomeranians and had developed her own breeding program. In 1891, the Pomeranian Club was formed along with its recognition into the English Kennel Club. The Queen had a fascination with small Pomeranians and bred them into a much smaller lap dog size. Her dogs gained a lot of attention and popularity when they became show champions. During the late 1800s, Pomeranians gained in popularity and were imported to America where they were recognized by the American Kennel Club. German Spitz and Pomeranian Size Comparison German Spitz are larger in size when compared to Pomeranians. A German Spitz is typically 12 to 15 inches tall and weighs between 18 to 29 pounds. Pomeranians, on the other hand, are only 6 to 7 inches tall and weigh between 3 and 7 pounds. Although this petite size is the breed standard, there are many Pomeranians that can be referred to as throwback Pomeranians or partial throwbacks. A throwback Pomeranian is similar to its ancestors and will be larger in size. German Spitz and Pomeranian Coat Comparison Both the German Spitz and Pomeranian have double coats of fur that is common among Spitz dogs. Although they have double coats, there are many differences between them. A German Spitz has a soft and cotton-like undercoat with a straighter and more coarse outer coat. Pomeranians have a short and dense undercoat with a fine, long-haired outer coat. The combination results in an extremely fluffy-looking dog. A Pomeranian's coat can come in 18 recognized colors, whereas a German Spitz coat comes in only 8 colors. German Spitz and Pomeranian Tail Comparison The German Spitz and Pomeranian both have fluffy, curly tails, but they are different. A German Spitz tail curls up over their back and curls into a ring shape along one side. A Pomeranian's tail also curls onto its back, but their tail curls flat onto the top of their backs. 
So a German Spitz and a Pomeranian head shape comparison. A German Spitz and Pomeranian have very different shaped heads and muzzles. A German Spitz head is wedge shaped and flat on top with triangle shaped ears that sit high on top of their heads. A German Spitz has a much longer muzzle compared to a Pomeranian. Their muzzles are usually half the length of their heads. Pomeranians have much shorter muzzles that are usually a third to two thirds the size of their heads. Pomeranians have small ears on top of their heads and often blend into their fluffy fur. German Spitz and Pomeranian Temperament Comparison Pomeranians are very cuddly, intelligent, playful, and protective little dogs. A Pomeranian is a wonderful companion that gets attached to their family. Your Pomeranian will enjoy going with you everywhere you go and snuggling up next to you for a nap. German Spitz have very similar temperaments when compared to Pomeranians. German Spitz are also intelligent, outgoing, affectionate, and easy to train. So the German Spitz and Pomeranian energy level comparison. Pomeranians are considered low energy dogs with German Spitz or medium energy dogs. A German Spitz will require more exercise than a Pomeranian. Pomeranians can have bursts of energy where they have a quick run around the backyard and then they're ready for a nap. A Pomeranian would make a better apartment dog in comparison to a German Spitz when looking at the exercise requirements of each breed. So German Spitz and Pomeranian training needs. The German Spitz are highly intelligent dogs that are known to be easy to train. Pomeranians can sometimes have independent streaks that can be harder to train. With daily work, both the German Spitz and Pomeranian can both be trained companions. It's also important to mention that any dog needs socialization to build up confidence and eliminate potential fear and aggression. German Spitz and Pomeranian Lifespan Comparison Pomeranians on average will live between 12 and 16 years of age. German Spitz will live on average between 13 and 15 years. German Spitz and Pomeranian Health Comparison The Pomeranian and German Spitz are very similar when it comes to their health and ailments. Both Pomeranians and the German Spitz are overall very healthy dogs with a handful of health conditions that they are prone to, luxating patellas, collapsed tracheas, epilepsy, and eye conditions. Since Pomeranians are smaller in size, they are more prone to be overweight, which can lead to health problems. German Spitz and Pomeranian Grooming Needs Both breeds require some grooming to maintain their coats. Routine brushing is needed to prevent and remove mats in their fur. Both dog breeds will blow their coats, which is experiencing seasonal shedding in the fall and spring. Since Pomeranians are more fluffy than the German Spitz, they do require a little more attention as far as grooming is concerned. German Spitz and Pomeranian Price Comparison Finding a German Spitz breeder can be hard to do. If you're able to find a breeder, you can expect to pay between $1,000 and $3,000. Pomeranians, though, are in very high demand. A Pomeranian puppy can be between $1,200 and $6,000. As always, make sure you're getting a puppy from a reputable breeder. German Spitz and Pomeranian Popularity Comparison Pomeranians are the 23rd most popular dog breed according to the AKC. The German Spitz, on the other hand, is not found on the list within the top 195 dog breeds. So Pomeranians and German Spitz are both very similar in many ways due to their close-knit history. Due to the negative connotations and royalty popularity, one breed rose to the 23 most popular dog breed while the other has been almost forgotten. Both breeds deserve recognition and love. If you're lucky enough to have either dog breed, make sure you give them lots of love and attention. If you like this video, you may enjoy my next video on what are teacup Pomeranians. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hug your palm today.